Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The U.S. Navy has evolved significantly considering its modern fleet of vessels and combat machinery. It has intensely invested and designed powerful destroyer ships to combat the threats of today, as well as those of the coming decades. In today's feature, let us highlight upon the fascinating evolution of U.S. Navy's powerful destroyer ships and several other machines with advanced capabilities. The USS Zumwalt, the newest ship in the U.S. Navy, is the largest and most sophisticated guided missile destroyer ever built. These ships have the most advanced electric propulsion system, wave-piercing tumble-home hull, stealth design, and cutting-edge combat fighting equipment. By drastically reducing radar cross-section and acoustic output, the composite superstructure makes the ship more difficult for at-sea adversaries to identify. The initial program by the U.S. Navy launched in 1994, projected 32 ships costing about $1.3 billion each. Zumwalt class was supposed to replace the aging Arleigh Burke class destroyers and be the 21st century super destroyer for the next 50 years. By 2005, however, the cost per ship, including primarily stealth technology and advanced armament, increased first to 3 billion, leading to program downsize to 24 ships, then 16, and then 7 ships only. Zumwalt class is equipped with two 155mm advanced gun systems, or AGS, that can fire long-range land attack projectiles able to travel up to 63 nautical miles, increasing the range of naval surface fires by a factor of three. In addition, the ship has peripheral vertical launch systems that can launch vertical launch anti-submarine missiles, Tomahawk land attack missiles, and evolved Sea Sparrow missiles. In 2009, the unit price for Zumwalt-class destroyer reached a record of $5.9 billion, overrunning the state budget by 81% which led to further cancellations, ending the program at three ships only that were actually built. The 600-foot ship accommodates up to 175 crew members who experience a sturdy life while at sea. They live in compact accommodation modules and spend most of their time in the day-to-day -day operations of the vessel. Additionally, the crew of the USS Zumwalt have a dedicated cafeteria, serving freshly prepared meals every day. Additionally, it uses active and passive sensors, as well as a multifunction radar that can conduct aerial surveillance over land in the exceedingly challenging and crowded sea land interface. The Zumwalt class has a flight deck that is 93% bigger than that of an Arleigh Burke class destroyer. and is 610 feet long and 80.7 feet wide, with a top speed of 33.5 knots. Similar to the Zumwalt class are the Arleigh Burke class destroyers, with multi-mission offensive and defensive capabilities. 
The Aegis Weapon System, or AWS, serves as the foundation for this class of destroyer's fighting abilities. The AWS is made up of the MK-41 Vertical Launch System, the Tomahawk Weapon System, the SPY-1D Multifunction Phased Array Radar, and sophisticated anti-aircraft and anti-submarine weapon systems. There is no need to load or target a launcher from above the deck, because the MK-41 fires directly upwards from cells underneath the ship's deck. The main armament of the Arleigh Burke class is a 127mm Mark 45 light cannon located at the ship's bow. An autoloader feeds the first 20 rounds, enabling remote control. However, after these rounds have been used up, an armament loading and handling crew is required to keep the weapon operational. These developments make it possible for the Arleigh Burke class to dominate at sea. The Arleigh Burke class uses gas turbine power and all steel construction to glide smoothly at speeds of over 30 knots in open waters. However, the U.S. Navy isn't content to stop with these sturdy destroyers. They go above and above to create and manage unmanned surface vessels, or USVs, which are sea vessels without an onboard crew and utilize varying degrees of autonomy when operating among the waves. The T-38 Devil Ray USV, for instance, is used by the U.S. Navy to provide logistical support in shallow waters. The T-38 USV has a burst speed of 80 knots, a cruise speed of 25 knots, a weight of roughly 3.25 U.S. tons, and a payload capacity of up to 2.25 tons. Considering the carrying capacity and speed of the T-38 unmanned surface vehicle, its role becomes pivotal in the effectiveness of the cargo transportation of the U.S. Navy. In addition to the T-38, the U.S. Navy also runs the Ranger and Nomad, which are two large unmanned surface ships formerly used for commercial transportation at sea. Both of these ships have spacious open areas in the back that are easily reconfigurable to hold various payloads and convey them from point A to point B while autonomously obeying the laws of the sea and avoiding other ships. For instance, the Navy employed the USV Ranger on September 3, 2021 to launch a consignment of containerized SM-6 rockets for tests. The US Navy also intends to eventually integrate other current unmanned platforms into the system of unmanned surface vessels, such as the MQ-8 Fire Scout and MQ-25A Stingray aerial tanker drone in order to control its expanding fleet of autonomous vessels. The MQ-8B Fire Scout is an autonomous helicopter system with combat experience that gives tactical users real-time reconnaissance and target acquisition data without requiring them to rely on manned aircraft or space-based assets. The U.S. Navy currently has two Fire Scout versions. The MQ-8B Fire Scout is one of the two and has flown more than 16,600 hours over 6,200 sorties.
All right, Plaza, I'm good with it up here. The Navy has integrated a multi-mode maritime radar on MQ-8B and tested an onboard weapons capability using the Advanced Precision Kill weapon system. The MQ-8B Fire Scout has also proven its capacity to fly in close proximity to other piloted aircraft while at sea. The MQ-8C Fire Scout, the Navy's newest unmanned helicopter, is the other type. The commercial Bell 407 helicopter, which has produced more than 1,600 airframes and clocked more than 4.4 million flying hours, is the basis for the airframe of the MQ-8C Fire Scout. It can automatically take off and land from any aircraft supporting ship, as well as from both prepared and unprepared landing zones. Another autonomous system that the U.S. defense possesses is the MQ-25 Stingray Aerial Tanker Drone, which is the first operational carrier-based unmanned aircraft in the world. The U.S. Navy's Carrier Air Wing and Carrier Strike Group's range, operational capability, and force projection will all be increased by the operating capability of this aerial tanker. In order to assess the MQ-25 system's integration into the carrier environment, the Navy, working with industry partners Boeing and Lockheed Martin, conducted a demonstration with the aircraft on board USS George H.W. Bush in 2021. It involved clearing the landing space, connecting to the catapults, and taxiing and parking on the flight deck. Data on deck motion and the effects of wind over deck on the propulsion system and controllability were also gathered. The integration of these autonomous, powerful, and lethal engineering marvels into the U.S. defense fleet will make it prepared to face the missions of the future. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.